Hello there, it's me, Rama, and this is part three of my series on how to use my Melee Weapon plugin. Now, we got swinging going so we can trace different things, but we can't yet decide what we hit. Currently, we're hitting the collision cylinder. We're also hitting the mesh, but we don't want to hit the collision cylinder at all if we want per bone collision. Now, depending on your game, hitting collision cylinder may be perfectly fine, and you might be done right here. You might be satisfied, but if you want per bone accuracy, so you can tell if the axe is hitting the shoulders or the head, and we don't just want to hit the collision cylinder all day, we need to change up the collision system of the weapon. The entire customization for this is done in one place, right here. Rama melee weapon, melee trace object types. Now currently, let me get rid of this, I was just demoing something. Rama Melee Weapon, default is Pawn. It includes Pawn by default, but you may not want to hit cylinders. Cylinders are usually Pawn unless you customize it. So we want to actually get rid of Pawn because we don't want to hit cylinders. So we're actually going to remove that entry from this array, Melee Weapon Traces. But now we need a way to hit the mesh of the character. Now the mesh of the character defaults to character mesh, which is also pawn. So we need a custom object channel to indicate meshes that we want to strike against. So let's go under collision. This is edit, project settings, then collision under engine. And we want to add a custom channel. Now here you can see I've been doing lots of little tests and everything. We make a new object channel, in case you don't have any and or you don't have any you want to use for this purpose and this is going to be the name of all character meshes that we want to strike against so we'll say um, melee character mesh to indicate that it should interact with melee weapons default response is ignore because for a mesh of a character you really shouldn't interact with anything unless it specifically should because the job of the, ca the collision capsule is to interact with the world for efficiency reasons, you should only be having the character mesh interact with things when it really should be. So now let's go back over here, click on the character mesh, and we're going to change its type under collision settings. Probably it's going to look like this. You want to expand that little arrow. You want to change it to custom. We want to use... no, no physics collision is fine. We want to change from object type pawn to object type melee character mesh. And that's it. Now, character meshes, really this, this can all be ignore if you want, just for supreme efficiency. Uh, and you can just use this object type. That's really all that matters right there. Now let's go over to ROM melee mesh, the melee weapon. And we want to tell it that it should strike against melee character mesh. The entire customization for my plugin is right here in this one section. The different object types you want to strike against and then the damage map. Now let's go in game and test that out. So notice now we're hitting the the mesh of the character. No long we're not hitting the phys the cylinder at all. Now what about this red guy? Notice he's not reacting at all because his his mesh is still set to pawn. So let's change the red guy to use the new object channel as well. Go under character mesh, change it to custom, no physics collision from pawn, change it to melee character mesh, and we can have it ignore everything because it doesn't, for our purposes, it doesn't need to, to collide against anything else at all. And now we have this girl still colliding, and now we have this fellow colliding too. Now what about the bone information? For the bone information, you have to use my custom, my hit event here. The weapon hit, that's binding to this delegate on the, the component. And you have to add in, currently we're printing the name, but we also want to get the bone information. So let's change it to nice purple color, and let's print out the bone info. So now we have per bone collision information that you can use with your game. For example, headshots. You can now know when you're hitting the head or not. Now see how we're getting all this data now. We're getting all that bone information. So th what my plugin does is it gives you all this per bone information and this total control over what parts of the weapon do damage using the physics asset. 
And now let's go and do the next step, which is that we don't want to keep tracing and getting multiple hits. After the first hit, we want to stop tracing because we've hit something, we're either going to rebound or do damage, and that hit has completed, or that tracing cycle has completed. So over here we have swing start and end, and we want to actually stop swinging at this point. So over here, so swing end, we're calling swing end from weapon hit, we're now calling swing end in order to stop the cycle so that we don't keep getting lots and lots of data. So now, notice it just hits once and stops. We're only getting, we're getting much less data now, just the one hit. Now the reason we want to do this is because if we hit the shield we want to stop, but currently we can't hit the shield. So let's make it so we can hit the shield. The shield currently has its collision setting to block all. We're going to change it to custom. We're, we're going to do no physics collision and object type we want to use fizz shields. This is another custom channel that I created on my own. Again I'm going to set it to ignore everything because that's just more efficient for the purposes of my game, that's all that matters. This is just a little demo project. If you find the shield needs to collide with something, you can easily just change it anytime you want. But the most important thing for my for the weapon collision system is the object type, fizz shields, custom channel. Now let's go back over to our weapon right here and we're going to tell the weapon to also strike against fizz shields. And you could add in other types as well. You can have as many as you want here. But we're not going to have that too many. We could actually, if we included world static, we can strike against the world. Let's try that. So watch, now when I hit stairs, notice the stairs respond now. I'm getting the information of hitting these stairs. However, I don't really need that information, but it's nice to have it. Well, that was fun slid right off. So that's the mannequin still is the same, but here watch now, see how we see it hit buckler wood? And that's actually accurate information. Also notice the traces stop now. They don't continue. And so now we have the full system of hitting the mesh and then also hitting the shield. And now if you want to do a particle effect, you can go over here where the hit event occurs. I have the impact point here and we're going we can do a particle effect here so we can say spawn emitter at location and we can pick our explosion and I'm gonna try do you think I'll see dust footstep let's try dust footstep let's see if we see that and we're gonna play it at the location that I'm giving from the weapon hit event let's see if that works Can you see anything? I don't really see anything. I think I need to use a different particle system that's more obvious. Let's go use something nice and big and obvious. So from here, let's use laser explosion. This is going to be rather large. I warn you in advance <laughs> because I was testing it for... I imported it from a different project. So that's rather big. But it does the trick. So now we know we hit the sh we hit something. That's what that's where the first hit occurred. And now you can see the full power of the system to create any kind of melee collision that you want. The, you can customize the system to your heart's content. This is the basic setup, but using the weapon hit event, using the anim notifies that you trigger here. Again, the anim notifies are over in over here which we these anim notifies we then put in the different animations which are over here if you go over to sprint attack let's go to sprint attack you can see where the animation notifies are occurring here using this combination of tools you can have a melee collision system up and running in shorter than this video series <laughs> so i hope you've enjoyed this series and uh, if you have further questions and you want further information, you should check out my website, www.ue4code.com. Have fun today.